on, y'all. It's your boy, James Gibbons here. And we'll see. And welcome to yet another episode of the Acromus Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with episode 54. And my man's is back in the house. It has been a while, sir. How have you been? I have been traveling the seven seas. Yeah. Figuring out life on my way to get back here. Happy to be here, guys. Uh, welcome <laughs> back. And welcome to you guys, too. If this is your very first time watching the Acromas podcast and you're watching it on YouTube, I want you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so that the next time you jump on YouTube and you are scrolling through that feed, the Acromas podcast will be one of the first episodes you see. And most of all, it is free to do so. See, I'm the person to let him know. It's free to do so, Jay. That's so, guys, make sure to do all those things. Subscribe, smash that like button. If you enjoy our content, we need to see more of that support, guys. We need to get that word, spread it out. We're on season two. We're on season two. So, let's spread that joy out. We have so much content, so many gems dropped, so much moments of just pure growth. And we're looking forward to you growing with us now and to the future to come. So, Jay, again, it's free to do so. So, please do those things, guys. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look, I... That word, again, I will never say. I said it one time, one episode, never coming out of my mouth again because I don't know how we're putting this out there for free. These are amazing gems. This is amazing content, great content to help you grow. So let's grow together. What a week it has been. Again, yet another week has gone by. It's Look, I'm sure all of you guys have had a busy week. It's a beautiful Sunday today. You guys, I'm sure, are getting ready to watch another NFL game if you're into that or you're just relaxing, you're just getting ready for whatever you're doing, we are thankful that you are here to watch us today. Last week, of course, we dove into fulfilling your purpose and living a purpose-driven life. And I got to say, I, I honestly, I focused in on that a lot more this week than I had before. And truly, when you feel like you're not living that purpose, or you're not living a life that you want to live, or, or it's not in alignment, things just get out of whack, and it's a lot harder to make it through the day when you feel like your day is not fulfilled, man. Oh, agree completely. Um, you feel like a part of you is missing. Um, and, and, and if you're really focused on it, you, you want to understand why. Uh, sometimes the best thing to do in those moments is just stop, reflect mm -hmm. on where you've been to understand where you are. And ultimately that helped you figure out the destination of where you need to go. So uh, it was a, a wonderful uh, experience to go through that episode. So many gems were, were dropped and shared, even in that moment where I feel like I grew. I'm sure I saw your, show your expression, Jay, you okay. grew. Yep. Um, and uh, it's just moments like that to reflect. Uh, and once you understand at least one of your purposes, it, you, it, it makes sense to you. It hits mm -hmm. different. And uh, as long as you're willing to give yourself that 1% of effort, uh, consistency, as we talk about all the time, each day, um, then you can't go wrong with that. Like you will be better for it because it's for you. So yep. dude, how much do you matter to you? Mm. Well, I mean, that word consistency is what, what always breaks it, right? Because I think every time we talk about growing and building and setting goals and, and achieving your, your own purpose, we, we, we rarely think about the consistency that is required to get there. Every single day, you've got to make progress. Every single day, you've got to do the hard things so that they become easier, they become part of your routine, and you can make it through. So again, I, I think that episode was something that, that honestly had helped me grow through this past week because as you start to, to work more into what you believe your purpose is, it gets a lot easier to make it through the day. Um, so just make sure you go back to episode 53, watch that episode once again, um, and take some notes as Will C said, and I know he was dropping gems in there. We just get the Holy Ghost. We just keep going. And that's what happened, man. So again, it's, it's great to be here and yet another day, yet another of Chrome's podcast episode. So let's dive into the topic today. Let's get it. Woo. So partners, relationships building relationships, being in relationships, marriage, all of those things, right? We all, we, some of us are dating now, some of us are married, some of us are, are looking to date and looking to find somebody that we want to spend the rest of our lives with. I think a lot of people in this world are yearning for appreciation, they're yearning for love, and sometimes, you know, you, you may believe that you find it, especially if you're earlier on in your life where there may have been a lack of experience, so to speak, when it comes to dating or, or understanding exactly what 
somebody else's life can help to fulfill yours as well. So I want to really dive into this topic today. We'll see. I think it's a great topic to jump into, um, meaning like, is your partner the best partner for you? Yeah, um, it's just it's good of us to kind of touch back on this and uh, just kind of go through this discussion of where we are at this point in our lives and uh, just kind of reflect on that and just speak in depth about certain certain qualities and certain um, perspectives as it relates to it. Um, and unbiasedly, of course, but, you know, I think we'll do things a little different this time. Yeah, you know, just a little slightly different. Now, the last time we had our guest on, we were not married yet. We were still engaged. We, we did not walk down the aisle the last time she was on. Mm. So this is the first time that she will be on as my official wife. And at this time, I am proud to present and announce Miss Brianna Gibbons. Welcome okay. to the Acromas podcast. Hey. <laughs> so with our, with our topic today, we really wanted to dive in into this. Is your partner the best partner for you? Now, of course, I had to have my partner on um, to really dive in and talk about what it means to be the best for somebody, right? Because you could, you could be the best in your own right. Um, you could be the best when you're solo or walking single. But once, you, once you're teaming up with somebody, somebody to, that is going to be with you for the rest of your life, it's, it's a little bit different, right? It's a different sort of walk that you're taking because you're taking this walk together. You're building together. You're growing together. So there are a lot more pieces that are involved versus maybe just dating or just getting onto the scene. So I, I really wanted to get started in this and, and, and talk about how kind of we got started into this, right? Because at first, um, you know, as anybody else starts off, we're all strangers to each other, right? We don't know each other. So there's a phase that we go through um, when we first start getting to know each other, right? It's that, it's that attraction phase. It's that, what am I seeing that, that brings my eye to you, that's appealing to my eye? And I remember when I first saw you, again, if you guys are new to this, we started off in a long distance relationship. So we did not have the element of being next to each other, being with each other constantly, being in each other's presence. So we had to rely on an internet connection and a bunch of photos mm -hmm. and some video too, some live streaming video. So we, I would say that in, in, you know, in our society today, people would deem that as starting as, at, at a deficit instead of starting as, at an advantage, right? Because we didn't have all the elements of being close to each other. So there's certain things that we wouldn't have been able to learn um, when we first started. So Bri, I, I'd want to take it from your perspective. When we first started, um, when we first started our relationship, we first started looking, what was that, what were certain things that you were looking at? Or a partner. Okay. Hi again. Um, good question. <laughs> well, I was looking for someone that had a vision and someone that wanted a future with me and not just, uh, you know, hook up and that's it. And there is one thing I remember from when I first laid eyes on Jamal's profile because it was through our social media, was his, he, he had a picture where he was standing. And what was the monument? What was the, the name of the monument? Oh, like the yeah, there? yeah. It was, in, it was in North Carolina. It was a monument for the Wright brothers. And that was my, that was my profile picture there. Mm -hmm. And I had this coat on. I was looking real sophisticated. She couldn't see my face, <laughs> but she saw the back. And it looked like, okay, this guy's got and dreams. And he was looking right? up, yeah. I was looking so up. So I was like, right, okay, sure. all right. And, and that that drew my attention. So I was looking for someone with vision, someone who was, you know, I know that's going to be serious about us. Mm -hmm. And really someone who would bring out the best in me. Mm -hmm. Right? So. Um, how in, uh, so how, how important was it to have that vision, though? Because I know sometimes when we're starting in a relationship, sometimes we. I don't want to say we get fooled by attraction, we get mm -hmm. drawn in a lot by it. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it's deceptive or it's not that, you know, looks could be deceiving, which mm -hmm. sometimes they are. But for you to be looking at vision at that time, for, for that image 
to be the image that you look at and mm-hmm. say, man, this guy, he's, he, he looks like he's going places, even though I've, I probably, I've never met him in person yet, yeah. but he looks like he's got, he's going somewhere. Why f- for you, was that a quality that you were looking for? Because I knew what I wanted. Mm-hmm. That was something that I wanted. I wanted uh, a family, you know, to get married. I wanted to build right and it didn't come just from the pictures alone or the picture that I saw but from talking to you right and communicating those things came up and I was like okay so it really is what I saw so because I knew what I wanted when you when I communicated with you and you presented that I was like that's it that's deep I mean like when when you get to that that next stage right because of course once you once you pass the attraction stage, um, once you pass that phase, you you move on to the next one, right? If you feel like this is something that this is someone that is building with you, mm-hmm. you move to that next phase of partnership, right? Being a partner, um, and of course, it's that it's that love phase. It's that here's the strong connection that I've been looking for. Here's where the trust factor starts coming in. Um, here is where we start thinking about, okay, what, what is our future? Mm. Is marriage involved? Mm. Is, you know, where am I going to live? Especially if you're in a long distance relationship, um, you know, what, what is, how is my life going to change if we were going to make this happen? I think when you're, you know, when you're thinking, when you're thinking about partnership, that's, that's an element of it that isn't necessarily thought of a lot. It's, mm. it's a change of scenery, right? Yeah. Are we both going the same way, both, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, are we both riding that same path together or do you have other thoughts in mind? So when we got to the stage of saying, okay, we're, we're, we're falling in love, we know what the future holds, but there are going to be some movements that are going to be painful mm. because somebody is going to have to change their location permanently. <laughs> somebody else is going to have to prepare for somebody else to move permanently, both whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, whether it's physically, all of those things matter, right? Yeah. So in this case, how, how are you able to still put those things aside and focus on moving towards being with your partner? I just want to you. I, I I wanted you. I knew that um, I try to picture my life in both ways, mm. right? I was like, okay, so I, I moved from home. I left my family and whatever. And while I was there, I was like, okay, fine. I can stay here. But do I see myself without this man in my life? Mm. And it was a nope. So... That was how I made the decision. And you made it kind of easy because you supported me, right? You you weren't just like, okay, fine, you made the decision on your own, but you kind of laid things out and helped me along the way. Mm. I think I think that's important too, because when, especially when you're thinking about changing, you know, changing a location or changing your environment, um it's it's big right i mean there are certain things that you have not even thought about um it's it's massive like some of the just the process itself to get there um takes a very very long time there's a lot of discipline involved there's a lot of patience Mm -hmm. involved but beyond that knowing that your life is going to change forever from that moment on is something that i think a lot of people may not be thinking about when they first start into it i'll admit when i first started when we first started dating first started talking that wasn't on my nope. mind at all, right? <laughs> I, you know, when I when I went on a website, I didn't sit there and think, all right, I'm going to find my wife on yeah, here. Like wow. nobody, especially something like that, especially with the the filter that I put in for, you know, the location and yeah. what my interests are. I never actually thought I would find you. Yeah. And, you know, to get from that, from that initial attraction phase, the puppy love phase to the, mm. the love phase where it's like, okay, we have to start concentrating on what is next. And then, and then comes that, that other phase where it's like, it's full commitment, right? It, it's, it's, it's love that it, it, it goes beyond love because even though you may have love for someone, it, you may not be willing to give up so much just to be with that one person for the rest of your life. Right. Once you get that, once you get into that commitment, sometimes you don't necessarily think about it 
until you're in it fully. Mm -hmm. And for you, or for us to consistently be thinking about, okay, every single day, every single evening, I choose you, right? Mm -hmm. Because we'll see, I, I believe that's what it's about. I think every single day we have chosen to choose each other. And through, through all of the difficulties that we have and anybody who is in a relationship has, um, that is going to be one thing that will test you. You know, it, it's, it, it goes without saying that it's very important to understand exactly where both of you are going. Mm -hmm. And when you know where both of you are going, you understand what it's going to take for you to get to your destination together, right? If I was, if I wanted to, to, if I wanted to go in a different direction after you got here, you know, even though we talked about certain things before you got here, I wouldn't be fair to you mm -hmm. because you uprooted your life based on what we were talking about, what yeah. we were building together. So, and, and vice versa, right? If I was to move there, there were certain things that we would talk about, certain things that we would, you know, communicate through, and we would come to and understand that we're committed in this for life. So whatever we said before is still going to hold true months later. And, and just to say, we're, we're six months into our marriage now. We're over six. Yeah, I know. You didn't know that, right? I just, I just, I, <laughs> you, like, I know you knew, but I'm saying it's like hearing it, <laughs> yeah, like, hearing it is, it's big. Yeah. You're like, wow, that flew, right? Bigger, bigger things of seven years. Mm -hmm. Seven years of knowing each other. That's, mm -hmm. that's truly yeah. incredible um, considering how this all started. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I truly believe that, that those phases, at least are the things that kept us strong that kept us going of course the attraction phase right let's let's not joke around here we're all physically attracted to who we're physically attracted to i think that's where it all starts right and then comes that emotional side where there's a bond there's something that you build together where you're like there's i am i am beyond the physical now there's an emotional connection here that i want to build with this other soul this other person mm -hmm. and then you get to that love phase where it's like okay now we're building something stronger now I am uh, I am 100% with you. I'm 100% committed to you. What is the next phase? Where do we go from here as a family? What is what is the next thing that we look at? So I, I, I think for us, that was the that was sort of our path to where we are now. And trying to figure out if if she is the best partner for me and I am the best partner for her we had to constantly ask ourselves that throughout that process, even initially through the attraction phase, right? Oh, is she my right height? Is she my right look, right? It's the initial, it's the initial phase, babe. That's what, that's what people always ask about. They always talk about that initially. But once you get past the physical, you get to the emotional, you get to the bond, you get to the growth, that's when you start understanding, okay, is this person really for me? Can I make that commitment? Can I take it to the next level? And I think all of those questions are important before you get to that commitment phase. Absolutely, right. yours. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot, um, you should put a lot of importance in uh, that friendship and that support. Um, for me, with Jamal and I, it was a friendship. Like I could talk to Jamal about anything, I can be myself. And with that, I was like, okay, I knew that I could, I can do this. Like if I knew at some point I felt uncomfortable, you know, a certain, you know, like not seeing certain mm -hmm. things or we can't, I can't just let my walls down with you and whatever. I don't think that that that's a match for you. That mm -hmm. friendship is a very, very important part because a mm -hmm. lot of the times you go into like the romance, like, oh, I'm in love with you, but you don't have that bond. You can't like sit and, and laugh and, and just, true. you know, chill out with your partner. So mm -hmm. I think that was important. You're, I think you're right because look, I, I'm a jokester at heart. I love to smile. I love laughing. Like you, y'all see me in this podcast every time. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So th this is exactly who this is too, right? In a female form. So I'm like, this makes sense that we can build together in that way, be our silly selves, be our true selves in this relationship from when we started to where we are now, right? Seven years later of knowing each other and we still, we're still the silliest, <laughs> in the group, right? Even your, your uncle said it, right? At our <laughs> wedding, he was like, 
He's like these yeah, guys, they're kids. kids. <laughs> yeah. And and that's just how our that's our soul. That's what we do with each other. That's what we do with all of our other friends. We'll see. I know you can attest to it too. <laughs> yes. It's it's just who we are at, at our at our at our best, you know. So I you're you're absolutely right. I think when you are being committed to someone that you consider your best friend, I think it goes beyond that that love phase. It mm-hmm. it's it's like it makes it, it definitely makes it easier because of course with all relationships. There are going to be certain things that you may not like that your other, your other, you know, your significant other sure. does. There's certain habits that you may have to go through yeah. with each other. And you, you, this is where communication and comprehension comes into play mm-hmm. because it's very important that you understand what the other person is going through. Why are they, why are they talking about these things? Why are they expressing it in the way they are? Is it an issue that they have to keep expressing these things? Maybe I need to look at myself and do some changes in order to benefit our relationship. Again, the commitment phase, right? You're in this together when you get to that point. So it is important that you you keep pushing that. It's important that you keep growing together because once you stop growing together, you start growing apart. Yep. And that's that's where everything that's where everything falls. That's, very true. that's where everything falls. Mm-hmm. So I, I think when it comes to you guys, right? Our Chromas podcast community, we want to we wanna now give you a little bit of advice, give you some tips, give you some things to, to take away um, from what we've been talking about from our own experiences, right? Because that's, that's what is important about this Chromas podcast. We come to you with experiences based on what we've been through, based on what we are currently going through now. Um, and I, I, I honestly believe that it is the most important thing for us to do um, is that. So I want to say that when you when you start looking for somebody, I think it's important to understand that there has to be some type of com- compatibility between each other. Between you and your partner, there has to be some sort of, there has to be compatibility period. I think it starts with understanding exactly what your future holds, where you guys are both going in life, where you are in life, what someone is willing to accept what their red flags are, what their, what their absolute no's are. Um, I think that's important right up front, especially if you're, you're really starting to get serious with your partner and starting to think about what the future holds. Yes, it's, it's very important to understand values. It's very important to understand what would happen in certain situations. And now look, going back to us, when we first started, um, and we'll see, I told you about this too, Whenever you would visit, and I'm not even sure if I told you about this, but when you visited, I wanted the purpose of your visit to be simulated as though you're living here. I didn't want to do, I didn't want, I I wanted to give you the world. I wanted to give you as much as I possibly can, right? But when you visited, I also wanted to be as realistic as possible so that when you come, I'm managing your expectations. Mm -hmm. So that when you're here permanently, it's not like, Jamal, I thought we were going to go see Lion King this oh, week. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were going to watch the movie. We went to the zoo and I came down. I, and we did I, I, I noticed the change. Right. So, so, so whenever you would come down, I would, you know, I'd, of course, I'd lay out a, a certain schedule because I didn't want you to get some experience <clears throat> in the area. Um, as my partner, I felt like I would owe that to you for you to understand exactly what you're going to get into. Um, now, of course, we couldn't test the weather, it being very cold, and this is your very first winter that you had to experience, it was tough, but the, way, <laughs> the one thing I would say is that I had, to, I had to be sure that you weren't surprised by what you were going to be a part of, mm-hmm. um, whether it was where we stayed, whether it was what we did, um, all of those things were done intentionally in order to prepare you. Because I, I believe if you were better prepared for the situation that you were going to come into permanently, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be such a big culture shock. It wouldn't be such a, a big shock to your emotions or, or, or your, you know, how you went about living your life. It would still be different regardless because it still is, right? There, there, there's a growing period that we're all going through. But I think if we did not go that route, then it would have been a lot harder to adjust. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, let me interject for a second with that. Uh, let's let's be clear, guys. It's from both perspectives, not just mm-hmm. from Breeze of coming abroad. It's also for Jamal too, yep. and um, those who are in long distance relationship. I imagine that you'd be able to relate to that part because it's a life adjustment for you too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was, yep. and then that's something else that we also have to look into as well. Mm-hmm. We're talking past tense of the development to life within marriage now. 
And what does that look like now? Because now you're around each other where where you were isn't like what that was. You're, you're in a different environment, different element now mm-hmm. where um, like, like I don't want to say like you, you did like a, um, a trial of like, okay, this is how we predict this might go. Right. Because now I'm pretty sure that's not what it is now. No. So <laughs> no. what does that look like now, right? Because you have like six months where you guys are around each other every day almost, you know? Right. Um, right. So you get to learn things more in depth about each other hmm. um, that uh, you, you necessarily, you can't, um, you can't make happen unless you have that time invested mm. with each other. So that's the other side of the element too, right? Mm. Where um, what what have you guys learned with each other at this point now that that are more quality based of like staying within that realm to be conscious and choosing your partner, right? Because that's the, the general consensus of like where we where we are now today. Mm. So it's like I, I say that from a perspective from those who are maybe married at this point. Um, uh and just sometimes things can happen where you can get lost in in you know our day-to-day and we're all going through what we're going through but i think it's important that we want to uh emphasize the the work that goes into it but because at the same time you don't want to lose your individuality Mm. and i think that's exactly is a big part of what happens to a lot of people uh when you're you're two different people because we all come in the world as we are by ourselves right we're constantly choosing to uh, take on a responsibility of being with someone. So that's an, a level of accountability that you must have consciously in the development of your um, relationship or um, as Bree put it uh, beautifully, like your friendship that you're developing, you know, your bond. I think that's really something that I think gets away from a lot of folks when you're trying to um, look for those quality traits because um, you want to make sure that this person is compatible as much as they can be with you, fits the quality trace of what you're looking for, but you have to be honest with yourself that these things change in your life too. Uh, marriage, and I speak from experience, that doesn't, on my side of how like that part of my life has been, uh, it, you develop and you, you're supposed to grow with that. And if you don't, then you, know, you can lose yourself as Jay said mm-hmm. a minute or so ago. So uh, I think it requires a level of open, uh, open door policy of just communicating with each other. Mm. Um, don't lie to yourself though. Mm. Uh, that's the biggest thing you could do is to not be honest inward because that your partner, if they know you enough, it's going to show outward. Mm. And if you really, mm. if you really, and here's the biggest part, right? If you want that growth and change, you're going to need to have that level of accountability to say, Hey, you know what? Uh, this is going on uh, with me. This is a me thing, uh, but it's affecting us. And in order for me to work on this, because I choose to be here with you, I choose you, you choose me. I owe, I owe this to you, this level of accountability. Mm-hmm. But I, as I work through this, I, I, I pray that you understand and you're here with me through this process because we ultimately chose each other. And I think if you have the approach of choosing that person every single day, you win in that regard. Uh, because time invested is a beautiful thing, but we all, we all evolve, we all grow. So who I, who we are today is not you know who we'll be tomorrow or a year from now, right? So that I think that affects a certain level of complexity within a relationship, uh, within your standards, within your needs, um, within your wants, your aspirations in life, because mm-hmm. your visions change um, constantly as you learn about yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I think uh, it's so important, guys, to just be honest and raw with yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, ask yourself those tough questions and uh, communicate with your partner. Um, and sometimes, let's be clear here, some folks out here, they don't know how to do that. And that's and that, and it's nothing wrong with because you're not able to articulate as well as another person, but be willing to have those conversations. Be willing to do whatever it needs, whatever that looks like, albeit uh, therapy, albeit uh, seeking group from your support system, your friends, close confidants. Uh, you know, family, whomever that you feel as though is in your su- your corner, it's going to support you through that process. Um, because, and, and know that it's okay as you're growing for certain perspectives of your views about um, wants to maybe be adjusted at times, but be open with your partner. Mm-hmm. Share that with your partner. Because if you don't, I can assure you that's detrimental to any form of growth. Um, you know, because it's a testament from what you see here, uh, 
with, with consistency where you may not get everything all across the board, right? But you communicate and you work at it because you both choose to be here mm-hmm. and you want to grow with each other and you're building a, an investment and foundation that you both see the same vision. Maybe how you get there may be a little different, but you're in line to work with each other to ultimately get to that goal. And that's where you want to be. Because if you could do that, like, and don't forget your your partner, um, like, along the way, and understand that you're choosing each other to be a team, and you're complimenting each other, mm-hmm. rather than it being I lead, you follow, mm-hmm. yeah. then you, you, you're, you're heading in the right direction. Um, a beautiful one at that. Because uh, as we always say, you know, you know, no time is promised to us. That's so true. the the time that we spend as luxury, especially if we're invested into someone, is so important because mm-hmm. you don't get that back. That's one of the hardest things to do is give time that's not for you to someone else. Because mm-hmm. uh, you're going on a leap of faith because you're hoping that this is pans out for what you want it to be. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important that you communicate it to that degree effectively as well as you can. You be honest with each other through that process so that you can not only love matures, you know what I'm saying? Like love matures, uh, emotions mature. Mm-hmm. Uh, emotional maturity is required in it because at times it could be fickle. You know what I'm saying? You can get into a dis- disagreement mm-hmm. because again, individuality. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to have someone that's going to be exactly the way you want them. It's it's healthy to to be able to have a voice. Mm-hmm. That's how I see it. So you don't always have, you compromise. You don't always have to see eye to eye, but you find a mutual ground where the respect, the love, the the the, un, the, un, the will to understand your partner even if you don't agree still with everything is still mm-hmm. there and if you can do those things guys i think it goes a long way um for you if that is what you choose because remember you're choosing this person and it's something i uh, i'll say uh you know jay we always talk you know and it was something that i we, we had a conversation about something uh you know and i did say something to him along the lines like look just remember the same eyes you had for your partner, that moment that you felt you fell, you fell for them, that you knew that this could be that one for you. Uh, they made you feel so, in a way that you just have never felt before. Don't lose that. Hold on to what that feeling is and choose them every day. It, even when it's the most difficult, find that moment. Um, because ultimately we are on time that's spent, that's borrowed. Mm-hmm. So invest wisely, um, invest into what is for you, be honest with yourself through that process, realign how the partner you're looking for fits into your life and what you as well can bring to it, to that situation so that you both can maximize the experience of what it is to choose someone like that's so big. I think that's under underrated, especially in a time where we say we live in perspective versus reality. Mm-hmm. So everyone kind of, for the most part, goes based off what they see on social media, and they judge relationships as that's kind of the topic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the general consensus is like, okay, that's the goal. Right, right, right. Everyone's relationship goes oh, different. Look, yeah. Jay and Bree, whatever they decide to do and, and what their their aspirations in their commitment their bond because to me bonds is so much that's mm-hmm. what you're aiming for is to build a bond through the form of friendship and all always yeah that's what they their journey is going to take them um and for me i just want to be a part of their support system to help them to, to be the part of the encouragement wherever and whenever needed mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you always <laughs> have been, man. You always have been. so i i just say that to say in a way guys i uh I mean, I don't want to try to take it like in a serious tone, but I think those are certain pointers that you kind of have to, to pay attention to. And look, again, it, my my journey and story, you know, check season one out, was no different. You know my story along the way where, look, at this point in my life, I, I am in a relationship now, uh, but it took a hell of a lot of work to get to where I'm at now. But to backtrack from that, I was married before. Uh, so I see what can happen on the outskirts if you're not taking those steps and that's detrimental um of a process if you're not willing to do the work within yourself to learn Mm -hmm. as well you accountability so you don't want to just point fingers at someone else about whatever happened what didn't happen in your life uh so that you could build to grow to understand what it is that you what is for you as i've done in my life now so 
you learn it, you grow with it. It's going to constantly change. But when you are choosing someone, choose to grow with them. Yeah. Choose to grow with them. Yeah. Don't yeah, sure. don't don't uh, settle for your individuality. But choose to grow with them. Yeah. And um, you know, you find what the meaning of love is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and you and if you have that self love, you can share that effortlessly yeah. with someone else, yeah. and that's a beautiful feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Partnership is about teamwork. It's not about me or about you, but when you have a partnership in, in any company, if you have a partnership company, mm-hmm. the two parties together have to be okay in order for the company to go. Mm-hmm. One person can't pull the relationship. So if I'm looking for my perfect partner, I look at how we are together. Or mm-hmm. I look out for you, you look out for me. We're growing together. And when you're growing together, you will always choose each other. So when I think of partnership, that is what I think about teamwork. Mm-hmm. It's about us. Let me and tell you. Jamal reminds me about that every time. <laughs> Sometimes I might say, um, oh, when I have my baby, he's gonna he's gonna like, when we have our baby. And I'm like, when oh yeah, baby. yeah, when yeah. we have our baby. Yeah. So it is about um partnership. It is, and look, <laughs> the Gibbons business is booming. <laughs> In all seriousness, no, I could not have a better partner by my side. Um for the past. For the past seven years, I have been blessed to have met someone who started off as a stranger across the seas, just through a Wi-Fi connection, is now the key to my heart. And I, I appreciate everything that you've been through, everything that we've gone through together thus far, and everything that we will be going through together. Um, this is the best partner for me, and I never had a doubt. The first day I met, I laid eyes on you. I knew that you were going to be my partner. You were going to be the partner for me Mm -hmm. and that we were going to be a partnership. And for everyone out there um, in our Acromas podcast community, I want to hand it over to you now. You've you've heard our experience. You've heard the gems that Will's been dropping based on his experience. So now we want to hear from you. Why do you believe that your partner is your best partner for you? Have you found the best partner for you? That answer, your best answer, will be featured on the next episode of the Acromas Podcast, which will be episode 55. And look, I got to say, this was, this, was a, this was a passionate, truthful, dive deep episode where we really got a chance to communicate and, and talk about why having that partner, that best friend in your life is important. Why having that person that you know that you'd be able to build with for the remainder of your life is important. Um, so I'm glad we had a chance to sit here and chop it up with our Chromas podcast community. I'm glad we were able to have Miss Brianna Gibbons back on for another episode of the Chromas podcast. And ladies and gentlemen, go ahead. Can I share why I think you're my best friend? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> communication. 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 Right? That's Effective that communication. Comprehension right <laughs> here. I am comprehending exactly. What there we go. Go ahead. <laughs> the reason, the reason I think you're my best partner is because you always push me to do better. Mm-hmm. In that way, I know that you love me because you don't only see you. But you're like, babe, I want you to do this. I want you, what are your goals? You seek to bring out the best in me every single time. And I appreciate that so much. That's where we go back to friendship. Like you want to see your friends succeed. Absolutely. Right? So, I mean, we are a team, right? But within a team, you're still an individual, right? And you still have your own mental stuff going on. And the fact that you're there for me through all of that, and you're like, babe, uh uh-uh, you got to get up, you got to do whatever. I love you for that. And for that, I know that he is my perfect partner or the one for me, not perfect, but the one for me. And I love that. Just give me some time. Let me get my, let me catch my breath. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Wow. All right. Um, what a moment, guys! Yeah, yeah. I, look, I'm I'm honestly speechless. I don't I don't know what to say, babe. I, I I truly appreciate that, and I appreciate you. And it is my choice every single day to make sure you know that. Um, and I choose that every single day. Good growth, guys. You just watch this happen. 
Beautiful part of bonding. <laughs> Soak it in. You got this too. <laughs> y'all are getting, I can't believe y'all are getting, I'm going to say the word. I don't, I can't believe y'all are getting this for free. This, <laughs> you said I grew to, to it. Row. I had to do it. I had to do it this time because it's wow. like, the, I can't believe you guys see this. This is, this is big time. This is big time. This is big time. That's the last, that's the last time. Probably that's the last time you're going to hear that. Not going to hear it again. Not going to hear it again. Ladies and gentlemen, See, I helped y'all. You did. I helped she did. Y'all. She, she always brings out the best. Out. That's she right. does. That's what she does yeah. every single time. <laughs> every single time. Look, it has been a pleasure. It's been a beautiful Sunday. Um, it has been a glorious conversation, and I enjoyed all of it. Babe, I, we appreciate you having coming on to this Acromas podcast episode it was a pleasure to, being here. to drop I these gems with me. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am glad you enjoyed it. It was very fun. Now, before everybody goes, of course, we I, I just got one more thing to, to say though, because this 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 has been on my mind too, right? And we did talk about this in this episode about how important it is to be real, how important it is to be honest, mm-hmm. how important it is to be your authentic self, right? Yes, that's true. So on the next episode of the Acromas podcast, we're gonna take a deep dive into why faking it until you make it is terrible advice. <sighs> It is the worst advice you could possibly. You're basically telling yourself that I'm going to live a fake exactly. life until I make whatever it is I make. Mm. You stay tuned to next week's episode and we will dive right in. Look, he's already getting impassioned about this. As am I, I'm getting, look, we're going to get into this as I know a lot of people out there push that. A lot. Fake it, until you, make it. Fake it until you make it. Bad fake advice. It until you make it. Bad advice. I've been told that a lot. Mm. Well, we want to address that. <laughs> a lot of people have to. So we're going to dive deep. And I look, I cannot wait till we get into that. We'll see. It's going to be it's going to be quite the episode. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Totally the opposite of what we just experienced. So, <laughs> well, yeah. I want to know what you guys are going to say. Oh, <laughs> tune in to the Acroma Podcast episode 930 a.m. on Sunday, episode 55 next Sunday. Okay. Oh, boy. I can't wait yeah. for it. Yeah. You guys sure? Really? That's gonna be to that's gonna it. be episode. That is interesting. It yeah. really is. It is. It is. There's gonna be a lot of broken hearts, but <laughs> we are here to give out the best. We're, we're here to give out the best advice to you. Advice that we know will help you through your life because you matter. And as Will C always says, you are so damn worth it. So it's yep. important that you understand that yeah. each and every time, and we are gonna bring that to you each and every Sunday. So, ladies and gentlemen, until next Sunday. It is your boy, J.H. Gibbons. Now we'll see. Hey. <laughs>